what's your opinion on scientific institutes having this process called knowledge filter? It means no one accepts a new theory if it is contradicting or if it has enough evidence to replace a well-established theory. For example, books like Forbidden Archaeology claim that several archaeological evidences suggests, suggest humans may have existed for millions of years. Since this evidence totally contradicts current understanding of when humans evolved, so these claims are put down as pseudoscience or utterly rejected. I believe Max Planck, Max Planck once said, science progresses one funeral at a time. You are right that uh, science has something, has a number of filters. There is something called the scientific method. And there is a very clear dividing line between science and whatever is not science. Things such as philosophy and spirituality and religion, etc. These things are distinct from science. There is some overlap between science and philosophy, etc. Now, it is true that there are very rigorous standards when it comes to new theories. Now, some people claim that uh, humans have been around for millions of years. I am aware that some people have this belief, some people have this claim, make these claims, but the evidence does not stand up to scientific scrutiny. It is very well known that the human chimpanzee divergence happened about 2 million years before today. The fossil evidence shows us that modern, anatomically modern humans evolved about a quarter million years ago, about 250,000 years ago. And from the evidence that I have seen, uh, I have not personally seen any credible evidence that humans have been around for millions of years in the form that we are alive, uh, we are, we exist today, anatomically modern humans. There have been hominins and other species, other older species of proto-humans, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, Homo neanderthalis, the Denisovans, the Flore, Flo, Florensis humans, Ardipithecus, and many others. But these are primitive humans, humans in the shape and form that we are in today, have only been around for about a quarter million years at maximum from what I, from the evidence that I have seen. I have not seen any evidence that overturns this understanding. Now, now, what is pseudoscience? Pseudoscience is something that makes certain claims, but it is not scientifically rigorous enough. Science has certain standards, and those standards have to be followed. Certain, if you if you make certain claims, there have to be there has to be uh, there has to be sufficient evidence that corroborates or validates these claims. Sometimes some people believe that something. Uh, represents scientific evidence, but it may not be rigorous enough. So the thing is that only scientists can tell whether this evidence is scientifically acceptable or not. Now, you you do have a point that certain, uh, well, all sciences are to some extent subject to dogmatic thinking and group thinking and all that. For example, in the science of genetics, there is still even today, this uh, this notion, they still are trying to propagate various formulations of the Aryan invasion or migration theory, even though it is now more and more clear that that is entirely untrue. And yet you have these institutes in certain countries that are trying to still push Eurocentric notions. So that is a misuse of science. And they are trying to reject any theory that contradicts their favorite claims. So yes, you are right that this does exist. Every scientific discipline is potentially falling prey to this. In, in physics, you have this string theory mafia. I mean, the, and the majority of uh, theoretical physics funding goes into string theory, which has not produced a single piece of concrete or verifiable uh, predictions. Not one. It's not been able to give it even one prediction that can be tested and, and a prediction that is falsifiable. And yet you have millions of dollars or billions of dollars being poured into string theory research every year. So that's the kind of dogmatic thinking, group think, etc. that does exist in science. So you are right to some extent. And to some extent, it is also true that lots of these claims are pseudoscientific in, in, in reality. 
many people who have no understanding of science want to dabble in science and they come up with all these grandiose claims. So one needs to be very careful in science. The very first instinct of a scientist is skepticism. And that is how it should be. The first instinct has to be if a new theory come, is proposed, how do I disprove this theory? Because a theory has to be falsifiable. So to, to uh, establish the validity or veracity of a theory, it is the job of every scientist who is, who is faced with the theory to try and disprove it, to try and falsify it. So that is the nature of science. You have to try and falsify theories before you can be satisfied that they are true. So this, uh, these standards are very much there and they do serve science because they enable the right kind of progress. Otherwise, we'll start believing all kinds of nonsense. So this is a complicated thing. Right, it's a complicated scenario. We do need all these standards, we do need these filters, but sometimes, many times, these filters are misused when you have these ganging up of certain people with certain beliefs or certain dogmas or certain agendas in science, and then they try and safeguard their citadel and they try to keep everybody else at bay, even when they know that they are wrong. So, so it's true. So this works both ways, and, and basically we need better management of science.